is following the uh, three-ring circus. All he needs is a couple of peanuts and a program, and he can tell all the people from each other. Brad Melke, ABC News correspondent in New York. Good morning, Brad Melke. Good morning, guy. I mean, this is, it's a crazy day, and what, what's nuts is how you can feel that this might only be the beginning. Both campaigns say that they're sort of ready for more allegations uh, about Donald Trump to come out. They're ready for more allegations about Bill Clinton to come out, for that matter. That We've heard people close to the Trump's campaign say, be ready for that, and Clinton people have been like, oh, we are. So, I mean, <laughs> this could only be the beginning of it all. Let's talk with the women. I guess the number's up to four women who have accused Donald Trump of some type of unwanted advances. I mean, that's just in the last day or so, yeah. And keep in mind, before to, before this week, there were accounts from women uh, in the New York Times, for instance, which said Donald Trump kissed them without their consent, that, that they were sort of trapped alone with him in these very compromising situations. None of those got a whole lot of play, uh, I think because it sort of came off like a he said, she said thing. Uh, the account in the New York Times, though, yesterday, uh, with these two women, one of whom was 22, the other one was 36, one of these reaches back more than three decades ago, but they say the last straw came when they heard heard Donald Trump in that leaked audio over the weekend sort of characterizing how he treated these situations that he could kiss people without their permission because when you're when you're a star they let you do it and when he denied actually doing those things at the debate that's when they said they wanted to punch the the television screen and uh, that's when they came forward to the New York Times and and put this out but uh, like you said not just those two women another couple in, a, in different publications all saying that Donald Trump uh, sort of did the things that he talked about now we should say these four Four women, they never brought any charges, no charges were ever brought, nothing like that, right? Correct. And the uh, Donald Trump campaign is vociferously denying any of these things actually happened. In fact, they're drafting a libel lawsuit against The New York Times as we speak. They've already sent a letter demanding a retraction. And they point out what The New York Times points out at the very end of the article is that the two women in their story are Clinton supporters. One of them actually donated a small amount of money to Hillary Clinton's campaign. Of course, that would beg the question, who else would you vote for if, if Donald Trump had groped you? So I don't know if that's a damning fact in itself. But... Uh, those are all sort of things to consider as we weigh the story. All right, that's the uh, Trump side. Now, the Clinton side with these emails and the WikiLeaks emails, it's a drip, drip, drip. What's this yeah. controversy over the Catholics? Well, so Jen Paul Mary, she's a top Clinton spokeswoman. You see her at all the debates sort of spinning on behalf of Hillary Clinton. She sent an email uh, talking about Republican Catholics and conservative Catholics and, and uh, didn't have the most flattering things to say about their religion, basically saying that these people sort of just crave ritual. That's why they're there. Uh, she now, though, says that this email isn't actually from her. She says, I'm a Catholic. I don't recognize this email. And she points to the sort of this larger theme that the Clinton campaign has been echoing this last week, which is, listen, Russian hackers, who go to WikiLeaks, often they put out things that are true to start. Uh, we know there's going to be more emails probably all the way up to Election Day. And as they go on, as they gain legitimacy, that's when they're going to start fabricating things. She claims this is one of those fabrications. But but for her to speak about a, a religion that way, the, one of the, the world's largest Christian religion, is really damaging for her, not to mention what we've already seen uh, about emails with Donna Brazil sending questions to the Hillary Clinton camp. Uh, so, so it goes on from there. And Donald Trump still fighting his own party? Oh, uh, absolutely. It, it's, it's Thursday. I'm sure we can get a lot more fights between Donald Trump and the Republican Party before then. Although, I should mention, he stopped the bleeding in some senses. Remember a, a few senators who called on him to step down from the ticket? They said Mike Pence should actually be at the top of the ticket. Well, two of those senators have since uh, have since now sort of re-supported Donald Trump, come back over to his side, basically acknowledged if he's not going to get off the ticket, I'm still going to uh, support the Republican candidate, and that's Donald Trump. So so it's a, it's a win in in the column if the senators have stopped unendorsing your if candidate. If only 10 senators are, have, have said they won't vote for you instead of 12, that, that is the silver lining this week. Um, let's, uh, Brad Melke, crystal ball this for me. What, what are we expecting these next couple of days? I mean, is this going to be a parade of women on both sides throwing mud at each side? Oh, I think absolutely. In fact, the Clinton campaign says they're getting concerned that the third debate could be even nastier than the second. And remember, that was a debate in which you had four women who were trying to go up to Bill Clinton and shake his hand after saying the Clintons ruined their lives. If the Clinton campaign thinks that uh, that that next Wednesday could be uglier than this past Sunday, then then this is is really going to be something to behold, not in a great way. Yeah, Chris Wallace from Fox News is going to be the the moderator. I could see him try and say, let's try and stick to the facts at least, and have a policy debate out of the three. 
and he actually has announced his topics, and they seem very much like the topics you expect from a normal election year. Debt and entitlements is is sort of uh, one one of the first topics he mentions. We haven't really talked at all about entitlement reform over the course of this uh, general election season. I don't know how much we'll actually hear about it. Uh, the economy, the Supreme Court, uh, and of course, the the last topic he mentioned is fitness to be president. I imagine we'll hear a lot about that one. Brad Melky, great job as always. Thanks for getting up early. Have a good day. Thank you. ABC News correspondent Brad and Melky covering everything, covering mm. the gambit when it comes to the political race. Uh,